course, we, we don't really talk about our feelings because as men, I think our biggest thing is if we are conversing, it's like, well, what's the bottom line? Yeah, yeah. And I think also, too, um, we don't want to be seen weak. Yep. So, so I feel like if I express how I feel, if I express my feelings or I share my thoughts, you know, and it may not be up to that other person's standards or what they think or what they've been stigmatized to think, it may cause them to, you know, look down on me or, or view me a certain way, uh, especially when it's the first impression. You know how they say first impression is always the lasting one. Mm -hmm. So men, we want to put on, we want to make sure that our first impression is, is like, okay, because it's like when I'm shaking your hand, when I'm giving you that direct eye contact and I'm giving you that firm handshake, you know, that I teach my sons to do, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that, that's showing that a person has confidence mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, you know, you want to give that that vibe off definitely. You know, you know how they say, man, it's it's not what people per se say, but it's what they do mm -hmm. kind of thing. And like that, that's that's how us men are, you know, we we're kind of like just observing low key, you know? Yep. So, yeah. 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 It's almost kind of unfortunate because we, we be sizing people up, you know, we meet somebody like, all right, so we got all these things going through our head. Okay. What do they want? Are they actually going to be cool? All these different things going through yeah. our head or maybe it's just me. I don't know. But <laughs> I, I do the same thing, but you know, I, I think, I think the only difference with me and you, I'm more, I'm more um, introvert. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm more of an extrovert. Oh, you're an extrovert. Oh, okay, okay. And so, like, like I said, there's no such thing as a stranger to me. Like, I'll come up mm. to you and start talking to you. I can okay. make conversation with you, and you know that, that that that's just that's just who I am. But still, that does go in my mind. That that those are running through my mind. But the I guess the security level is just not as high as it normally would be like now my wife on the other end she reading you off the muscle off the jump yeah. like <laughs> ain't no exceptions and it's kind of like i'm i'm more of the uh person that's kind of like I i'm gonna let you in but you know you got to really do something crazy for me to you know not not give you that you know type of vibe like <laughs> no i hear you i will say yeah because even when we met at the the love remix mm -hmm. um you know we would have to go to different people tables and converse with different couples and a lot of times for me, even when I'm meeting other men, I'm like, I kind of start off with putting the ball in your court. I'm like, OK, let me see how how are you going to act if you acting like a weirdo or if you're kind of, you know, distant standoffish. I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm just I, I'll take the initiative. If right. it, you know what I'm saying, if you're not kind of feeling the vibe, or whatever, like I'll, I'll put myself out there. And if, if we're not feeling the vibe, then I'll just be like, okay, well, obviously, because, you know, a lot of guys be cold and callous uh, yeah. or they just too cool, right? They just, you know, uh, yeah. super stoic or super macho, you know, they got to kind of um, overcompensate for some kind of insecurity or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I'm just like, let me see how they, how they act around me or other men. And if they're cool, then we can buy. If not, one thing I would not do is pressure a relationship, like try to force something that's not there. If it's not there, I'm, 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 I don't care who you are. You could be. I don't that, know. That, yeah. that's, that's facts. When you, I, you, you, you won't catch me chasing you, man. And like, you know, it's funny you said that because I told my friend, one of my good uh, platonic uh, friends uh, yesterday, I was just like, in this season of my life this year, I'm, I'm not, I'm not forcing friendships. I, I was normally the person that, um, as far as my guy friends that, I'm sorry, it was a fly. Mm -hmm. um, that would, um, like, I would be the person, you know, periodically calling, you know, mm -hmm. consistently. And I'm like, dang, you don't text me, you don't call me. So, man, I ain't doing it this year. I love you. Yeah. I love you to death, but I'm not doing it this year. I'm not, I'm not forcing something, man. And it's like, um, I had one other friend that, it, it you know it, it rubbed me the wrong way my wife like like I told you she liked that guard dog she you you shouldn't even be talking to them I'm like I'm like Jessica chill man chill. <laughs> no no I, I knew from the jump it was something wrong with him it was something wrong with him. I'm like okay well let me find that out you know what I'm saying and it's like you know 90% of the time she's right you know mm -hmm. and 
that, that, that that's just the, the the way that I am that I'm, I'm wired and so I'm trying to get myself out of that place man to just like you know if, if it's going to be something man I feel like it should be a a 50 50 effort now there's some friends where I just we just kind of have that understanding like I have one really good friend and the way we communicate is we text most of the time mm -hmm. you know, that's that I mean I talk to him literally probably like once a week and mm -hmm. it's through text messaging and I mean and that's that you know mm -hmm. that's just how it is with us you know yeah and it's all good. And I think that too proves a certain a certain level of friendship. It's like, we don't have to converse every day. You know, some guys be getting in their feelings and all that stuff. It's just like, man, like, you know, life, it, and depending on, I think depending on your age too. You know, yeah. if you're a teenager, that's something different. Um, yeah. 20s, I would even say. Now you start getting in your 30s and your 40s. You know, I think that's when we start at least learning how to respect each other's time, whether if that's with their families or your own grind or whatever it is you're doing so it's like we don't have to converse all the time we just have a certain way of connecting and when we do we don't miss a beat right correct mm -hmm. yeah, yeah man. and that's how it is like with me man we don't miss a beat man like i i know we talk at least twice a week or via text or i may hit you up in the morning you know what i'm saying we may converse on you know some material and content that we may do for the um you know 40s unfiltered but mm -hmm. uh, that, that that's what it is man yeah for sure. Uh, I was uh, on this article on Healthline. It says uh, guys aren't prone to sharing because it's talking about the four scientific reasons men have a hard time maintaining relationships. The second one is guys aren't prone to sharing. A study of 2000 children and adolescents found that males were more likely to view talking about their problems as weird and a waste of time. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, I, my mind kind of went there a little bit when you was talking about shit. <laughs> oh my god! But hey, uh, <laughs> hey, it's forties up fifty, man. Yeah, right. Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. We live in different times. Sharing <laughs> <laughs> is caring, man. Come on, take one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! You never yeah. know. Whoever listening might have thought the same thing. Who knows? Yeah, 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 yeah. If if you if you know if you know you, you know what it means when I say take what put it to you. Yeah, yeah. Say, uh, yeah. I, I I think that is true, man. With men, you know, uh, we do have a hard time, you know, sharing, you know, um, again, uh, feelings and stuff like that. Even um, I would even go as far as to say ideas and concepts, man. Mm. Like. Um, Sometimes, you know, uh, I had a one situation where I shared an idea and the concept with somebody and they thought it was whack. And I'm like, bro, are you serious? And it's kind of like, like it, it rubbed me the wrong way, uh, you know, because like, I thought the idea was grand. Yeah. The fact that they shot it down, I'm just like, man, are you serious? Like, this would be, this would be really good, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, like I said, it made me feel a certain kind of way from the standpoint. It, it made me more guarded and reluctant to share anything else again because that was something that I thought long, long and hard about, and I really thought that that would be something like great. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it, it, it bothered me. It really did. Mm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And I guess you can't share, you know, your your dreams and stuff with everybody and your goals and. I guess you know there's only certain people can go behind that veil in the party in the part part of your life, you know. That's true. That's true. That's that's absolutely true, man. But yeah, like um uh that's one thing I do, you know, admire even about our friendship, man. Um uh I'm able to, you know, share things, you know, and and, and the good thing about it is that, you know, when we meet October uh shoot, so don't, don't let me get a line i don't know i, I believe it was october no i can't remember but yeah. i think it was october it was either september or october man mm. and um you know that's what roughly three four months man and like um i feel like i've been knowing you like for years it was something that was just organic you know and even with the you know wives you know it was just mm -hmm. still something organic man and like you don't really, you know, find things like, you know, like that, you know, often, man, that that's, that's really like a unicorn situation. And, oh yeah. Uh, I wanted to give you your flowers here, man. I really appreciate you, bro. Like you, you really um, caused me to see things differently, man, when it comes to the whole podcast thing, man. And uh, just, just the um, whole world of like uh, communication on uh, the social media 
mm-hmm. platform standpoint, man. Um, and it, it's also created the avenue for me to be able to share again what's uh, on my heart and what's in my head. You know, my wife would always tell me, like I shared last time, how there's so much great things that I have in me, but um, I just never share them. But you know, you meeting you and coming into connection with you, man, that has given me the platform to do that. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate you, bro. I just want to tell you that, man. Keep doing your thing. And man, I'm telling you, this gonna blow up, man, because you got a gold mine, bro. I I appreciate it, man. I, you know, when we met, uh, I was like, I told my wife, I was like, okay, I was like, that's a good dude. Because I don't, I don't really waste my time on too many people. Cause like I say, some guys are just super macho. Some guys are too caught up in themselves, you know. So when we did meet at the um the love remix, it was like it was all good. I was just like, all right, we just gotta stay in touch. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And right. let's see what become of it, right? Right. I was like, man, I got another brother, man. That's, that's, that's dope, man. I and I was just telling just I'm like, man, it's scary how much me and, Sh- and me and Shano are like and how we have a lot of similar experiences, man. You know, uh you're a few years older than me, but still it's like we have a lot of similar, you know, experiences, man, and just stuff that we've uh experienced and gone through, man. Oh and yeah. For oh, you yeah. to be where man, like you you have like a, a lot of wisdom, man, a lot of nuggets, man, that's that's packed in inside of you, man. It's mm. man, for real, for real. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, I appreciate that, man. But this is what we do on 40s Unfiltered, right? We just keep it 100 trying to help some uh brothers out here. And I think even what we do together, um, I think is special because you really don't have a lot of men who's married and actually willing to help other men like through genuine talk um without any of the foolishness and all that other stuff going on i get it people you know they get off on certain things i get it but as far as this i think i think it's something different man i think it's something special so um there are some other great podcasts out there but especially for our age gap for men right i think that's what makes a big difference too yeah man you you you, you you hit it on the nail, man. Um, uh, I I think what makes this um, you know, a little bit different is again, you know, we're it, the, uh, the the age gap and the age difference, man, and that you know also um, us being you know married men are willing to you know reach out and like help other married men. Yep. And um, I mean just men in general, but you know you mm-hmm. know married men also you know specifically. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, this is a, a a great avenue, man. I also think too, man. Um, uh, it's always just good to just uplift brothers and just share, you know, just, just that whole sharing concept, man. You know, that's what I, I really just, I'm, I'm really on and want to just improvise more, man. Mm-hmm. For sure, man. I'm, I'm glad that we got this thing going because uh, it's definitely been a blessing for people who've been listening and watching as well. Uh, number three is males prioritize marriage and work. Uh, they said they say that they have found it much more likely for men to sacrifice friendships to focus on their marriages and careers. Because, you know, of course, we're always going to get caught up in our work, you know, because a lot of times it's like you don't work, you don't need, you know, we got to we got to keep that rolling. Uh, we have to keep our marriages rolling uh, or, or relationships. If you with somebody in a relationship, you know, um, and then that male friendship kind of do fall by the wayside sometimes because we're trying to juggle those two big main ones to help keep us afloat you know because if one of those two if our job fall off or if our relationship fall off you know yeah yeah right and then even our friendships kind of somewhat erode because now you're in a difficult spot in your life and you might not even have the courage to even say what's really going on right so. That's good, man. I, and I think also too, bro. I think uh, that ties on also with your your spouse, your mm-hmm. wife, and how she views the friendship and how how um, mature she is on handling, you know, you having a having a friend, and how also her knowing that how important it is for you to have uh, have an outlet. You know what I'm saying? someone that you know will that, that will be able to hear and listen to you um you know um, a good book says confess your faults one to another you know what i'm saying so you having that, that 
that, that safe haven, you know, that person outside of, you know, your wife that you can go to and talk to, you know, it's nothing like, you know, a, a man can all, only understand another man, yep. you know, like there are some things that um, I can convey and I can talk to with my wife, but she wouldn't be able to understand because she's not a man. And so if you have a wife or have a spouse that's able to understand that and, and, and know the importance in that, and importance in that, I believe that they will help you be able to maintain that balance that you need, you know, to be able to um, uh, uh, have somebody to, you know, talk to and vent to. And then too, man, you have situations where you have, uh, you have a friend that's been your friend for a long time and some years that you know, deep down inside, like, yeah, I don't need, you, you know, you had that friend, like mm -hmm. some of your wife, your wife be like, man, I wouldn't trust y'all on no boys trip together, yeah. you know? So that plays a role in it too, man. So I, I, I say, I, I think that call there with the, with the number three is just based on the maturity of your wife and the, and the, and the, and the foundation of your friendship with that person, that, that other male figure. Mm, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Cause she'll be like, yeah, I don't trust him as far as I can spit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. Interesting perspective. Exactly. I mean, hey, real talk. I have a friend now. Like, man, that's my boy. I love him to death, but I know I couldn't go on no boys' trip with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not the fact that, you know, like 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 my past used to tell one of my mentors used to tell me, you know, with God's help, I'm not gonna do something I'm not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. With God's help. I, I will never ever say, I will never ever have confidence in myself, but with God's help. With the confidence of God, you know, I'm not going to, you know, step out or do anything crazy, but you don't want to, again, put yourself in a situation where, you know, that you can become vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't do that. You know, so I know, like, there are certain people that I can't go places with like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a transparent moment too. So yeah. No, that's no, that's real because like you say, sometimes you could put yourself in situations and then you mad at the whole world. It's like, oh, you played yourself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, yeah. uh, number four is our brains may not be wired for as much uh connection. He talks about with men. A 2014 study found that males had stronger neural connections in the parts of the brain responsible for perception and action. While females have better connect connectivity among the neural pathways linking analytics and intuition, two two areas used heavily in interpersonal connection. So they're saying with men, our, our part of our brain is responsible for for perception and action, and women pathways are linking to analytics and intuition. So uh, That's really good, man. Yeah, because I think with women, a lot of times it's more of um, you know, that nurturing mom kind of thing. They just kind of talk about these bonding things, these connected two kind of things. And with men, it's always about our action and the way we perceive things to be. You know what I'm saying? This is my raw reality. This is a, the the hardcore life I live, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. And, and, to, and to actually confirm that, man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember who said it. I think it was Steve Harvey. But he was just saying that the way that that, that men measure each other is about by what financial status we own. Mm. You know, when uh when uh we all get in a group, you know, the question will come up, hey bro, what you do? Yep, that's the uh, first uh, thing. Yeah, so it's kind of like they they subtly ask you that to be cool, but it's like okay, you'd be like like if you ask them like what you do, uh man, I um I work at a uh, Burger King. Mm. When you say that, it's like. I'm going to easily make my perception of you. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you on this status level. Like, okay, so I'm going to treat you accordingly. Wow. Because you're like Burger King. Unless you're not mature enough to be able to say, okay, well, you may work at Burger King, but who, who to say that you ain't, that you don't own it? Mm. Who to say that you, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody know your situation, you know? And so, yeah, that, that's that's how that's how I, I've been a victim of that myself. But like the the more I come into uh, maturation and maturity, man, it, it's like I, I say, okay, now I think like that. Now you know, I'm, nobody knows your backstory. You know, when we first meet, so I don't know what 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 call, what decision caused you to you know work at Burger King. You know what I'm saying? You could have been a multimillionaire and and 
hit the recession in 08 and lost everything. So you just never know, really, you know. So, but that that's that's how men do, man. Like we we'll sit around and like, man, <laughs> my 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 wife and I, I don't care, uh, but on her side of the family, like 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 all her uncles and stuff like that. Oh man, like yeah, like our uh, we had a um a wedding that we were going to. And so uh, I walked in, you know, wherever I go, I'm gonna always be fly. That's just, that's just me. Yeah. And so when I walked in, you know, I was dressed nice or whatever. And he gonna look at me and be like, man, you look like you somebody. And I said, I am somebody like, <laughs> like, like what the hell you mean? <laughs> like I am somebody like yeah. real talk, you know? Yeah. And it, it, it was, it, it was low key, like <laughs> condescending, like, bro, who, who are you? Mm. To tell me I look like somebody, nigga, I am somebody. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, man, but that, that, that's what men do, you know, and they go on to them <clears> questions, <throat> you know, hey, what 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 status, you know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that, man. Cause like people thought, because I was a musician, I ain't make any money. How much oh you that ain't no real money. Just because I'm not clocked in or I'm not, I don't, I don't have a W-2 like that doesn't mean that I don't I'm not making money. I got friends now that 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 that's musicians that make over six figures. Mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. so i'm yeah, sorry I, I, you, I know you about to say something no that's good because i was thinking like you said the whole perception thing man I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times we do uh look at men according to what they do i remember my mentor um i remember he told me one time he said once you get past the fluff he said because that's fluff he was like uh Next time, once y'all develop somewhat somewhat of a friendship, he asks, he say, ask them, who are you? Okay, that's cool. All right, you you this, you that, okay, you blah, blah, blah. But who are you? Outside of what you have, who are you? Come on. Because if I can detach you from your job, who are you? If I can detach you from all these titles you have, who really are you? And you'll be surprised how many people will be stumped. And we're talking about in the area of, of manhood, how many men have no idea who they are apart from their job. Man, I, that, that's a whole mouthful, man. <laughs> that, that's a whole mouthful, man. I, I'm reminded of a story where uh, it was a um, guy that was um, walking in the, uh, I guess, like it was like a, a, a swamp or a pond area. And he walked upon this um, uh, man, he looked homeless. He looked like, you know, he didn't have any money. He looked, he looked bad. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, to paraphrase and, you know, uh, quick in the story, the man had some, um, what appeared to be like some rocks in his hand. And um, the man was trying to give the guy, you know, these rocks. And he was like, please, can you take these, can you take these rocks from me? Um, I wanted to give them to you. And the man was like, man, I don't need that. Those are rocks. Oh, I don't need, what, what is it? It's mud. And so uh, he ended up um, not taking them. And so the guy started crying. He was like, look, man, I, I'm a, I'm a, basically I'm a, I'm a, I'm of authority. I'm a, I'm a king. And he was just like, I'm just here, you know, disguised. And he took and he he poured water over the stones mm -hmm. and they ended up being like diamonds and rich jewels and crystals. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I was trying to give this to you, but based off the perception and, and based off you looking at who I was, you didn't want to take them. Mm -hmm. And so I know I jacked up the story, but <laughs> but the more of the story is that like, you know, again, like we we we're we're so stuck on the perception of things and how we see things, man, and we we judge a person, man. You know, and, and a good book says, and man, be careful how you judge someone because you could be entertaining angels unaware. That's right. So, yeah, That's right. That is so true, man, because, um, yeah, like you say, perception is everything because a lot of times you, and, and don't even jump into the whole social media perspective. Right. Oh, I, I'm 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 valuable because I have a blue check mark, and I, I posted this on Twitter the other day. I said, you are already valid without a check mark. OK, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm like. I was dope before social media. <laughs> and don't and, and ain't that what it means when you have the blue check mark? It means you're validated, right? It, yeah. And, and so many were like, like you're like you're like you, you, you the real person, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, you know, it's like, oh, like I heard one lady, uh, 
I, I ain't gonna even say her name, but she was like, yeah, I get a lot of, I get a lot of blue check marks that slide in my DM. And basically she was saying that I only get the, the cream of the crop that only that comes to me in my DM because that's how fine I am. And I just think about how many people actually don't feel validated because they don't have a blue check mark or they don't have 20 million followers on Instagram or, you know, saying like, you have to know who you are, detach yourself from that social media stuff, because that can drive you crazy because you got to know who you are outside of that stuff. It's a great tool, but who, again, let's take it back. Who are you beside outside of your things and titles? Yeah. Wow, man. Wow. I wanted to also expound on um, just the 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 positive effects when it comes to men coming together and and mm-hmm. and, and joining and, and becoming a cohesive unit and solid man. Um, you know, just to make reference to, you know, a, a really famous book, you know, it just says how good it is for, you know, brothers to dwell, dwell mm-hmm. together, man, and come together in camaraderie and union, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so weird how, and this is how jacked up the media is, man, but uh, I believe it was 2015 or 16. Don't quote me right on the date because I could be a little bit inaccurate. Mm-hmm. But um, they had they had redone the Million Man March. Mm-hmm. Did you see any type of you know uh, advertisement or any type of you know coverage on it in social media? No, and it 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 just shows it just shows how like it's so much of a threat for us as men, mm-hmm. you know, especially you know men of color to just come together, man, and be on one accord, man. It it, it it's so much of a threat. It's so much of a I believe it's going to cause such of a great sensation, man, within, you know, uh, the world when all of us can come together on one accord, man. And you don't really see a lot of just great leaders just raised up again, like, you know, the the, the Dr. Kings, the Marcus Garvey's, um, the Elijah Muhammad's, you know, you, you don't really see that a lot now, man, the Malcolm X's, um, the, um, what was the other guy named that they just did the movie about, um, Oh, uh, Fred Hampton. Uh, yeah, Fred Hampton. Hampton. <laughs> Twenty-one years old. That's crazy. Twenty-one. Twenty-one years old with with that much of an effect on people, man. That that charismatic, man. That that charisma, you know, it, it's 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 it, it's a beautiful thing, man. And and we we don't really see that no more, man. And I think that's why a lot of the men now are are really like misguided, man. Even in the uh, hip hop community, man. You know. When Pac, when Biggie was taken down, Nipsey, Young Dolph, man, all, all of them boys, they 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 had, even though I don't agree with some of the content and the lyrics that they came out with, but at the end of the day, man, if you really just understood their mind and the way that they thought, man, and and you know, it, it was before their time, you know. Yeah, heck yeah, man. I totally agree because uh yeah, once men come together, um and, and even with leadership, I think, uh, yeah, I'm not going to stay on this too long because this going to be a whole another episode. Oh gonna, yeah. It's going to be a whole different episode. But I will say that you talk about like great leaders and stuff as far as that. I think we don't have that anymore because we have so much access to social media. Like we have, we can pick and choose who we want to run with, whether good or bad, you know. We just pick certain people who we want to run with because we have so much exposure. So we really don't have those leaders. Um, uh, and I think t- I think today too, we depend on superstars and entertainers to be our leads because they have a certain lifestyle that we want to attain. So whatever they say is gospel. You know what I'm saying? So that's the that's the day and age we live in. I don't even want to stay here that long. I, I just want to say this real quick. Now that I think about it, I was telling my wife the other day, um, I was watching this YouTube video with Lecrae and he was talking about the new Christianity and no shade against anybody, but he was just making a point. He was like, you know, you got Chance the Rapper and, and Kanye and all these. It's like this new wave of Christianity because for a minute it kind of took a nosedive, but now it's like, oh, it's cool to be Christian and stuff now, right? And he, 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 
him just paraphrasing, he was just saying like, it's all about the prosperity. It's not about those core moral values about, you know, loving yourself and love God as you love others and all these other things. It's just kind of more prosperity. So I think that's the way things have kind of shifted today. It's all about having a money phone uh, opposed to having some morals and values. So anyway. It's, it's marketing. It's about what you can get, man. Yeah, Get paid, man. Hey, hey, and Jason, check this out. It goes back to what do you do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It got, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what it falls back into, man. That's wow. That's that's a great correlation to put together like that, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh any closing comments, anything else you want to say, man? Because we we can I can rock on here for another two hours. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Um now I just want to say, man, um uh you know, if you are um in a place where you feel like, you know, um, you need someone to talk to, you need someone, you know, to vent to, uh, of, you know, the same gender, man, you know, and you, and you do have people, you know, in your life that, you know, are friends, you know, um, I would just say, you know, uh, again, like I said earlier, come with the open mind and be able to receive, man. I, I think it's very imperative that you do find some type of like mentor or some type of person that you can deem as a father uh, figure. Uh, there's a good book that says there's many instructors, but there's few fathers. And um, the difference between an instructor and a father is an instructor is just a person that's just going to teach you and, you know, just give you, you know, A to Z, this is this and that. But a father is someone that's going to stick by you and it really instill and impart into you and wait until they see that that seed and that investment you know, uproots, not uproots, but, uh, you know, springs up. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, father's someone that's going to put time and love into it. And, you know, um, so I would just admonish you, man, just to, you know, find someone, man, that you can just really, you know, um, allow yourself to be open and be poured into Mm -hmm. in this time. It's really important because we have a lot of uh, men out there, man, that are just misguided and, you know, uh, need direction. So yeah. that, that would be my, um, you know, closing comments. Mm, for sure. Man, this has been another great episode of 40s Unfiltered. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you're listening to this on podcast, make sure that you share this video. If you're watching it via YouTube, get this into the hands of someone, uh, another brother, maybe an uncle, cousin, who knows? Um, right. So, yeah. So that way, you know, each one teach one. We're just passing on some wisdom that God has given us after 40 something years on this earth. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is Sean Heineman. This is Jason Lockhart. All right, people take care. Be All right, have a great day. <laughs>